Alright, so remember we're working on one step, two step equations, and we just solving for the variable. Alright, make sure you write today's date, which is October the 12th. October the 12th. Two more minutes on the do now, two more minutes. All we doing is solving for X. Solving for X, and we're solving for Y. Alright. Remember we use inverse operations. Inverse operations. Alright, uh, can you work them one out for me, Caleb? Work them one out, but be Caleb. Operation of addition is subtraction. A minus B will be two. A minus A will be zero. So that'll cross out. And then you got eleven minus A, which will be three. Thank you. Alright. So if you use inverse operation, the, the opposite of addition is subtraction. A minus A equals zero. They cancel out. Eleven minus A equals three. Thank you. Anybody got number two? Anybody got number two? Anybody got number two? Come on down. Come on down. Subtraction is addition. So we add four to both sides and cancel out nine plus four is thirteen. Thank you. All right, number three. Number three is a two-step equation. All right, number three is a two-step equation. One was put. My dear Aunt Sally, when we're working on two step equation, we work in reverse. Alright. So, Peter Mus, parentheses, exponent, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, right? That's the normal order of operation. Alright. But when we try to get a variable by itself, we do it in reverse. So, the S is subtraction. So, the first step was to subtract. Inverse operation of addition. So you just track it both from both sides. It counts it out. 10 minus 4 is 6. You rewrote this equation. 3y equals 6. Alright, next step of that reverse order of operation is division. Alright? Because the inverse operation of multiplication is division. So you divide 3 on both sides to get y by itself. 3 divided by 3, they cancel out. Y equals 6 divided by 3. 3 goes in 
is six two times. Thank you, Miss Toy. All right, uh, can everybody pass their do now sheets to the front? Make sure you got your name on. Make sure you got your problem now. Variable with the value of the 
variable is an example, a equals 3 is the solution to 4a minus 18 equals 2a. Explain your answer. All right, so what are we doing, Caleb? What are we doing with a? So they tell us in 3. What are we doing? Just plug in, right? Alright, so we plug in everywhere we see an A. We're gonna plug in A3. Alright, so when we rewrite our problem, we'll have 4. 43 by 18 and 23. Oh, so 2A, 3. So everywhere where it was an A, I put a 3. Alright? Everywhere where it was an A, I put a 3. Alright, so 4 times 3 is 12. I'm rewriting them, I'm simplifying it now, okay? So 4 times 3 is 12, minus 18, 2 times 3 is 6. All right, now I'm ready to simplify a little bit more. 12 minus 18 is negative what? 12 minus 18. Negative 6. Alright, equals 6. Alright, on top it says, the equation is true if both sides of the equation equal each other. Is both sides equal? No. No. No, we got a negative 6 and a positive 6. So this equation is what? Not a solution. Not a solution. Alright, you got a U try. All right, you got A, B, and C for you try. I want you guys to take a minute and try these three equations on your own. Everybody got that written down already? Fire race. Take about five minutes to do that on your own. All you're doing is plugging in for each variable, all right? Just plugging in. All you're doing, remember, all you're doing is taking that value that they're giving you to. Maybe trying to see if it's true or false. A negative plus a negative is positive. A negative plus a negative is a negative. Alright. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this negative three and plug it in everywhere I see an X. Alright. Who got number one? Man, letter A for us. Uh, let's see. King, you do it for me, King. Go ahead and write it for me. So what King did is plug the negative three in for every x that he saw in the original equation. Five x times negative three, he got fifteen. Eight x times negative three. He got negative twenty-four. He simplified again. What was fifteen minus two? Got negative 17 on both sides. So, Devin, is the solution true or false? I don't know. What you mean? What you mean you don't know, Devin? I don't know. You don't know? It is. Uh, uh, King, is it true or false? Is, it, is the solution true or false? Is what? It is what? It is. True. Devin, so is the solution true or false, Devin? True. Is what? True. Why is it true? Because what? Uh, the same thing. And they do 
but they equal each other, right? Mm -hmm. So they equal on both sides, that makes it true. Anybody got B? Come on, B, can't look. M is equal to negative one. All right, we need to test the solution. So for every M in the original equation, you plug in a negative one. Okay. I you plug it in, you simplify it. Negative one plus nine is eight. Three times negative one is negative three. All right. Then he did negative three plus five, and he got two. Yeah. <coughs> You got A equals 2. <coughs> Is the solution true or false? I don't know. How you going to know? No, no, false. <coughs> Charles, what's your got? It's false. It's false. The solution is not the same on both sides. It's different. Okay, so, I mean, I can't, I'm sorry, Dan. It is not the same value on both sides. Is the solution true or false? Is what? Oh. And why? Because it's not what? It's not what? Equal. On what? It's not equal on. It's not equal on both sides. Both sides. Okay? Alright? We're going to leave C blank because I'm going to check to make sure y'all got an understanding for it. We're going to move on to the rest of the notes so we can get into the work session. All right, make sure you finish the seat. I will check it. I will check it. <laughs> All right, so we're on the back side of the front page. We're talking about the additional property of equality. If A equals B, then for any number C. All right? That is, if we are given that equation, And we are allowed to add the same number to both sides of the equation to get an equivalent statement. All right? We are able to add the same number to both sides. All right. Everybody see this blank, right? Yeah. To clear a negative, to clear, or to get rid of a negative. We blank it to both sides. What we do? Add. add. We add it to Addition. both sides. Addition. All right. Whenever we have a negative, we can add it to both sides to get rid of it. The practice example we have below: x minus nine equals four. We try to get x by itself. Okay, guys. In order to get x by itself, we're going to add 9 to both sides. Negative 9 plus 9 equals 0, so they cancel out. We bring our x down. Bring our equal sign down. 9 plus 4 is 13. There we go. Real simple. Multiplication if A equals B, then for any number C. That is, if we are given the equations, then we are allowed to multiply by the same number on both sides of the equation to get an equivalent statement. We use these two properties to help solve equations. To solve an equation means to undo all the operations of the equation, leaving the variable by itself on one side. This is known as isolating the variable. All right, everybody got that? Yeah. All right, to clear multiplication, we divide. divide, right? The opposite of multiplication is division, so we divide. All right, both sides by the number. The example we have, eight, negative eight x equals 72. We know whenever a number is next to a variable, they're multiplied, right? So the opposite of multiplication is division, so we have to divide both sides by a negative 8. All right? When 
negative eight is divided by negative eight, you get zero. So they cross out, you bring our eight down. 72 divided by negative eight is negative nine. That's what I'm talking about. All right, when using the multiplication property equality on an equation like this one, all right? So you got a letter, you got a variable with a negative sign in front of it, all right? You got a variable or a letter with a negative sign in front of it. No double, all right? It e it's easier to think of that negative that's in front of it as a negative one, all right? So whenever we see a negative x or a negative, it can be any letter, negative z or negative r. We're going to think of this negative as an imaginary one in front of it. Okay? That'll make it simpler for us to understand, okay? <coughs> when we want to isolate the variable. Alright? So we said whenever a number is in front of a letter, they're doing what? Whenever a number is in front of a letter, they're doing what? Multiplying, right? So the opposite of multiplication is, so we would divide both sides by a negative one to get rid of it, to get it by itself, okay? So I just let it be All right, that's just something to remember. A couple of you Try problems, all right? This is your work session here. All right, so you got A through L to complete. You are trying to solve to find out what X is, all right, or whatever the variable letter is, okay? You're solving to find out what the variable is by using the inverse operation. All right, you're getting close to the end of class. We'll take a couple minutes to finish this little work session. And then we want to go, we're going to open our Chromebooks up and go to our Canvas page and complete the near pod. All right? Before we leave for uh, uh, lunch. All right? Anybody need any help? Yeah. Just solving for X. Just solving for whatever the variable letter is. All right. If you need to, you can resort back to your notes. That way you'll you have a perfect practice example. All right. We did each one of those in our note session. Thank you. 